Mark Heim here, founder of Disaster Doc, and I'm bringing to you lesson number one in our 15 part series, module number one, an introduction to disasters. Let's go through those learning objectives together. After completing this lesson, students will be able to define the word disaster, define disaster hazards, define disaster vulnerability, and recognize that disasters result from both hazards and vulnerability. The students should also be able to identify the three largest disasters in the world between 1900 and 2015, to be able to list the four general approaches to the classification of disasters, recognize that disasters have been increasing worldwide for the past century, but more recent trends remain unclear, and then finally to recognize the phenomenon of hybrid or mixed disasters. So first off, the definition of disaster. A disaster is a serious disruption of the functioning of a community or a society. It then causes widespread human, material, economic, and environmental losses. And these losses exceed the ability of the affected community or society to cope using its own resources. Disasters are caused by hazards and vulnerabilities when these two things mix and come together. So let's talk about each one and then we'll take a little bit deeper dive into that mixture of that convergence. So first off, the definition of a hazard. A hazard is a dangerous phenomenon, a substance or a human activity or condition that may cause loss of life, injury, or other health impacts, and those are what we're concerned about in this particular series. Also, it causes property damage, it can cause loss of livelihoods and services, it can cause social and economic disruption, or even environmental damage. Examples of hazards in particular include floods and radiation or chemical spills, earthquakes, typhoons, outbreaks, and tornadoes. These are all hazards. Even though we've used those words to describe the disaster itself, it's different. And I like to give this example. When we're talking about, for example, a tropical cyclone. Now, a tropical cyclone, it's the same thing as a typhoon and a hurricane. It's just named differently in are different areas of the world. So if a tropical cyclone were to occur in the ocean, and it never went across a, uh, an island where people live, it would only be a hazard. It's only when the tropical cyclone meets a vulnerable population and the hazard and the vulnerability come together, that's what creates the disaster. So I wanted to separate the idea of hazards from the idea of disasters. A little different, that subtlety you'll learn more about as we go through the rest of this seminar. So I mentioned disasters are caused by this hazard and uh, vulnerability mix. Let's talk about the definition of vulnerability. So according to the UN, the definition of vulnerability is the characteristics and circumstances of a community or a person that may make them more susceptible to the damaging effects of a hazard. So example, not all people have the same level of vulnerability. Some people may be more vulnerable to the exact same thing because of their age, their gender, disability, or a host of other factors. I want to show you this particular table because I think it's very important to recognize that these top four disasters worldwide when we're talking about categorize them according to the number of deaths because it's actually very remarkable and very stirring. In World War II, we would classify that as being the largest number of deaths of any disaster during the past 115 years. 72 million deaths associated with that particular world war. Number two is actually pandemic influenza uh, in 1918 and 1919. In that period of time, 50 million people lost their lives from this global pandemic. World War I was the third highest death rate from uh, disasters during 1900 to 2015. 20 million people lost their lives in that particular man-made disaster. And then the fourth highest, the China drought, another natural disaster, 3 million people lost their lives in 1928 due to this very severe drought and disruption of food supply and food security. So we know from studying these disasters over the past 50 years that actually, especially during the past 50 years, disasters are increasing worldwide as this figure may show. The dots each represent a level for each one of the years between 1964 and 2013, so a 50 year period. And I wanna point out that last uh, uh, segment of the, of the red uh, square that we have here that we're gonna dive a little bit deeper for the next slide to be able to take a closer look at what's been happening since 2000. So this is the representation of 
actually just those last few years, from 2000 to 2013. And you can see that overall that trend appears downward since 2000. But we have too few data points. In other words, we don't have a good enough set of information to make a valid conclusion. There's just not enough years involved for us to be able to tell for certain that we know that there's a downward trend. So our degree of certainty is low, and we'll keep watching this as well. But as we know since the 1940s and 50s that we've really seen this remarkable increase worldwide of disasters. That's why this is so important for all of us to work together in reducing this number and continuing to push that uh, scale downward as well. So I want to speak to you about the general ways to classify disasters now, and there are four main ways or approaches that people use to classify disasters. One's based upon time, one's based upon advance notice, one's based upon the size of the response, and the other is based upon the type of hazard. So let's look at those one by one. When we classify disasters according to time, typically we put them in two categories, slow onset or fast onset. Slow onset disasters, for example, like droughts or things that take a long period of time for it to begin and then tend to last a long period of time. That slow onset gives us an advance notice. It gives us the ability to be able to know that it's coming and make some last minute preparations for that. Fast onset disasters, however, occur very, very quickly. Of course, less warning, less time um, to be able to make those last minute uh, adjustments and, and be able to prepare or respond um, in that case. Now also we classify disasters, as I mentioned, based upon advance notice. There are advance notice disasters and no notice disasters. So for example, a tropical cyclone that's out in the ocean heading towards land, we usually have a few days notice. Um, we know that the tropical cyclone is coming, we can evacuate populations, we can board up houses, we can make the kind of last uh, few days of preparations that we need in order to be ready for that disaster and to lower our risk. But these no-notice disasters, like an earthquake that starts just immediately, starts shaking, no notice whatsoever, those are the kinds of things that we have very little warning whatsoever, really no time to be able to make any type of last minute preparations. Therefore, we have to think in terms of being ready for these kinds of no-notice events. We have to think in terms of that many days ahead of time, um, even years ahead of time, to be better prepared when it happens without notice. We can also classify disasters based upon the size of the response necessary. And this gets back to that definition of disaster that I want to talk about. And there's a fine nuance between the definition of an emergency, the definition of a disaster, and the definition of a catastrophe in this example. And you know, people tend to use those words interchangeably, but if you're going to be technically correct with this, and I know that you, know, you wanted to learn more about this particular issue of disasters anyway, we'll dive into that a little bit more. So we said that disasters are actually when the needs exceed the resources of a community to be able to respond using their own resources um, in order to make things better or to lower the morbidity and mortality, lowering the deaths and the injuries, for example. So that's the definition of disaster is when it exceeds that community's capability. Now, an emergency is the same kind of phenomenon, only it doesn't exceed the community's ability to respond. So an emergency, for example, may be a small number of injuries or a much smaller uh, scale disaster in particular. And since it does not exceed those needs of the lo a local community, there's no need for outside help to come in. We call it an emergency and not a disaster. So emergency and then disaster if you need outside help. And then there's a third, even more significant and a larger scale um, uh, size of a response here, and that's catastrophe. Catastrophe, the definition there actually takes one step further and says even with outside help, we're unable to stop the increased morbidity and mortality among these populations, that people can come in to help and excess people are still dying. So with even with the world coming to your doorstep, still doesn't make a significant enough difference, we call those catastrophes. And so that's how we differentiate according to the size of the response necessary. And then we also base or classify these disasters based upon the type of hazard in particular. And so we call them, for example, three different categories, natural, technological, and hybrid. What do I mean by those three? So natural um, disasters are caused by natural hazards, so those that occur in nature. So 
hurricanes and so on, and we'll talk more about those in, in remarkable detail over the next uh, 14 uh, lessons that we have in this seminar. But technological disasters, otherwise known as man-made disasters, these aren't occurring in nature. They're actually occurring because of human technology or human activities that cause these disasters. And then there's a third type called hybrid. Some people call them mixed disasters. And these actually are a mixture of natural and technological disasters that occur. So you may have, for example, a hurricane, and a hurricane causes a chemical spill, and that's a good example of a hybrid disaster. So let's go into the three classifications and give some examples of these different uh, classifications of disasters based upon hazard. Examples of natural disasters include typhoons, earthquakes, and tsunamis. Examples of man-made disasters or technological disasters include chemical spills or explosions, oil spills, or terrorism. And then there are hybrid disasters, and I can give you an example of when an earthquake occurs and then fires are caused by the disruption of the gas mains that occur in a city. And so we have a natural disaster of earthquake that results in a technological disaster of a fire. That mix is a hybrid disaster. So we can further subclassify natural disasters into three main categories, hydrometeorological, geological, and biological. And the hydrometeorological are associated with weather. So we see floods, cyclones, storms, drought, hot and cold waves, and wildfires. On the other hand, geological disasters um, have examples such as earthquakes, tsunamis, volcanoes, landslides, and avalanches. Geological origins mostly associated with the movement of the earth. And then we have a third category of natural disasters associated with biological disasters. And these include things like epidemics and pandemics. Once again, infectious disease outbreaks or epidemics and pandemics that worsen and then become overwhelming. We can also classify disasters according to the mechanism of injury of that particular hazard. The mechanism of injury, of course, is that, that aspect of how that particular hazard affects the body in a deleterious or dangerous way. So natural hazards like floods and cyclones and tsunamis, mechanism of injury in most of those cases is drowning. A tsunami also has a, a mechanical component to the mechanism of injury, just like earthquakes and tornadoes. And we also see a thermal mechanism of injury with things like heat waves and cold waves, where there's either too much heat or an absence of heat. We can also classify man-made disasters in three broad categories, just the same as what we did with natural disasters, only the classification is just a little different. Once again, it goes according to these hazards and how they affect the body. So toxicological hazards, for example, include chemical disasters, or chemical releases, and radiological releases. Thermal hazards include things like fires and explosions and bombings. And finally, those mechanical hazards like transport crashes and structural failures and those kinds of mechanical ways that the body becomes injured. And this particular table represents those mechanism of injuries that we were talking about with these man-made hazards. Chemical, radiological disasters all cause this toxic mechanism of injury. Fire actually has an overlap between toxic as well as thermal. It's the same as explosion that has an overlap with thermal as well as mechanical. And then transportation accidents, as I mentioned, structural failures, purely mechanical. I also want to point out with this particular table that actually nuclear disasters, actually a detonation of a nuclear bomb, for example, will span the entire realm here of toxic, thermal, and mechanical style of injuries. And so we can see that is actually a hazard, a man-made hazard that, that causes a multiple types of, of injuries, multiple mechanisms. I want to take a little bit deeper dive into this idea of hybrid disasters because you may not have heard that in the past and we're really seeing that as a modern phenomenon over the past uh, uh, century of course where as technology has increased we're seeing more of these mixtures of, of disasters of both natural and technological disasters that result in this hybrid. Hybrid disaster is a situation in which one category of disaster actually may trigger another. So I alluded to earlier, fires and explosions that happen after earthquakes, where the earthquakes trigger these uh, fires to occur. Also, toxins spread after floods. So a flood occurs, it goes through a, a chemical facility or a chemical storage area, carries those chemicals or those toxins on the floodwaters and disperses those to a larger exposure of populations. 
We can also, for example, see things like windstorms after radiation um, exposures, like what happened in Chernobyl, where the radiation had gone to one extent because of a man-made disaster that released the radiation, and then windstorm came through and extended that exposure, and once again, increase, uh, creating a natural disaster that worsened a technological disaster. Now this particular photograph I want to share with you, this is one of my own personal photographs that I took during a response that I did in Venezuela. This was the largest port in Venezuela on the coastline, of course, and this particular port actually had a very flat area and then went very abruptly up into mountains. And there was a storm there There was actually a tropical cyclone out at sea, and when it rained, it brought in many, many heavy rains into this particular area. Those rains fell in the mountains, accumulated speed, of course, and velocity and power, and came down as landslides in that particular um, port city. And, you know, the tragedy there was 30,000 people lost their life in one day due to that natural disaster. And then when I was called um, to respond to this disaster and went from the United States to help Venezuela as well, we, when we got there, we recognized that there was actually another impending, impending um, technological disaster that could be possibly even worse than the original natural disaster. And that was this mixture of chemicals that was happening or could potentially worsen there in that port. So what you're seeing in the background in this particular photograph here is you're seeing the actual mountains in the background and then this flat area and the buildings and the, car and the uh, train cars that you're seeing in this particular area and, and uh, truck uh, uh, cargo containers and so on, shipping containers, all mixed together in the foreground of this particular uh, photograph actually show where these things had been mixed together in warehouses also. And these warehouses had multiple chemicals that when one chemical would ever touch the other would have resulted in huge explosions. Now we're talking about explosions that can create a blast radius of five kilometers wide. So my role was to look at that and say, we have one disaster that's already occurred. We have to prevent this chemical disaster from occurring. We have to prevent the hybrid disaster. So a hybrid disaster, again, a situation in which one category of hazard then triggers another. So finally, I want to thank you for the opportunity to be able to speak to you today. I want to uh, encourage you to be able to keep going. Come visit us at disasterdoc.org. Thank you. Bye-bye.